A couple days ago, we finally released the eraser tool in Kittle, and you guys are absolutely loving it. We love it. We're so glad that you love it. If this is news to you, I did a video right here that you can watch and then come back and watch this one. This video just kind of goes through the basics, how you actually access the eraser tool, how to change the size of it, and the different types of things that you can erase. But today, I wanted to go over a couple of cool things that you can do with the eraser tool to elevate some of your designs. So let's hop into the editor and check it out. So one of the things that I love doing is interweaving text. So basically you'll have two lines of text and you could have one that sits on top of one of the other. But if you wanted to have some of those ligatures kind of like weave in and out of other letters, now you can do that. And I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do that. So I've just got two lines of text right here. People save, this is ballet, and this is bricklage grotesque. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is decide which line of text is going to be on top. And I think I've already decided that because the script font right here is on top. So the font that is on top is the one that you're going to be erasing away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my bottom font right here and I'm just going to turn the layer visibility off and then I'm also going to turn the layer visibility off the background and then I'm going to click on my one artboard. Make sure that you have your artboard selected because if you don't have an artboard selected you go to export it's going to export all of your artboards into a zip file. So I'm going to select my one artboard download. This is a 2000 by 2000 canvas. I just like a little bit more pixels than 1200 by 1200. Nothing against 1200 by 1200. It's just not enough pixels for me to feel confident that my designs aren't going to get just a little fuzzy. So I'm on 2000 by 2000. Then I'm going to go grab that from my downloads and re-upload it into Kittle here. And at this point I could go just so it's easier to see, turn my background back on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my X port that I re-uploaded now and I'm going to put it up in the corner as you can see my guides right there are telling me when it's directly in the corner and then I can size it up and then it should once we get to that corner snap so that it's perfectly the same size. Now if I zoom in you will see some pixels. That's because after we've exported it, it has now become raster or pixels. Raster just means pixels and not vector. So our normal type that has not been exported, you could zoom in endlessly and it would continuously show you that sharp line because it's vector text. But if I turn on my exported version that I re-imported, you can see that it's going to be pixels. Of course, it's going to look bad if you zoom in. But if I'm zoomed out to a size that it would be seen on like a phone screen, there's no way you're ever going to tell. So don't fret. Just make sure that you're working in a good canvas size and you should be OK. So this is my re-imported version. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn all my layers back on. Now, I'm going to, this is critical, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom layer of that script font and I'm going to put it behind this lower layer of text. Now what I can do and I'll, I'll explain why you should do that too. So now I can click this in the video before I explained that you can go and click the eraser tool right here or if you don't want to have to zoom out to click that you can just hit E on your keyboard and it'll bring up your eraser tool. Now we can determine which parts of this we want to erase away to show that lower line of text in front of the script. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase this part and I'm gonna erase this part right here so I can just go boop right there. And so now after I exit the eraser mode, we've got this nice, clean, interwoven kind of text effect. Now here's the reason why you need those two layers. So if I get rid of this, and then I turn off that bottom layer of script and I go to erase this, I'm going to have to zoom in and be super accurate and take a lot of time doing this because as soon as I hit over that edge, it's gonna show the background behind it. It doesn't look super good and you're just gonna waste a lot of time, trust me. I even recorded a version of this video before even I just had a brain fart. Like literally I've been doing this in Photoshop for years and I know that this is what you're supposed to do. For some reason when the eraser tool came out in Kittle, I was like, oh, well, we're just gonna have to be really accurate. No, it's not worth your time. Make sure you duplicate that text layer and just put it behind. Uh, we could even try it in a different spot. So let's say I wanted this part to be behind the A and right there. And then when I'm done, 
boop. So now I've got a different interwoven design. Another helpful tip before we move on to the next one is if you're worried that you're going to have to redesign something before you export anything on the artboard to re-import and then erase away, which is how actually a lot of programs work, I would duplicate your artboard and then work on that copy so that you still have your original, you still have your original two lines of text that you can go and you can change. Regardless of what you're doing, it's good to have a copy of an artboard if you're gonna be trying out different variations. Always try your variations on a copied artboard and not your original. So what we can do is we can practice this again with this artboard. So you know the drill, I'm going to take my bottom layer of text, turn the visibility off, visibility off on the background, select my artboard, and then hit download and download that. Now I'm going to re-import that back into Kittle, turn my background back on just so I can see what I'm doing, make sure it's lined up. You can see the guides popping up there at the top left corner. And then there we go. I can turn my sans serif font back on and then I can take my typed script font and put it below that Maiden Kittle font. And now, same thing, I can hit E and I can start to erase away the parts that I don't want. And we can zoom out. See, like for example, if you zoom in, you're gonna see like a little bit of pixelation. You would see that if you zoomed in on the exported version. So don't get upset, don't fret, wait until you export it to see if you're actually having any issues or not. Let's say for example, I wanted to try something different. I could just hit Command Z twice and then hit my eraser tool again and I say, oh, okay, I want to try this variation of things. And I think I actually might like that better. I like to alternate. So for example, I know that I have four different spots on this text where it's the top line of text is touching the bottom line of text. One, two, three, four. And I have four points right there. So I'm either going to erase the first one and the third one or the second one and the fourth one. And I feel like that helps give you that kind of woven effect because it would look kind of silly to erase this and this, and then it's like, see, it just doesn't feel super balanced. So what I would do is one here and one there, or one here and one there. So you're alternating the places where your top text touches your bottom text. Okay, let's move on to the third. You probably know the drill at this point. This is just about getting reps and practice. Same thing, we're going to Actually, this is a little bit different because it's the bottom line of text that is being erased here because I find that this works really, really well when you have a script font and then a serif or a sans serif font because the script fonts are what have those, uh, those arms and tails and ligatures that fly out and go over top of different text. Obviously, if you're working with two lines of serif text, it's like if you have woven and then woven, it's like what is there to erase really? So you'd have to do a lot of experimenting with different stuff to see if you can make that salvageable with the, the fonts that you're using. But I like to use a combination of script and serif font or a script and a sans serif font because it gives me something to erase. So in this case, I'm going to ungroup these because apparently I had those grouped and I'm going to click this, turn the layer visibility off, same thing with the background and I'm going to export just this together text, select my artboard, download. Once again, I can turn my background back on and I've got that text right here. I'm gonna align that to the top left corner, size it up, perfect. And then I can turn my woven text back on and then same deal. I'm gonna take this together font and I'm gonna put it under this woven text. Now I can click on my exported text and I can do something like this. And then you really just have to experiment. So like that's a touch point here. Here's one here, so I'm not gonna do that. I might do this, not do that, and do this. That looks pretty cool actually. And then these are on top of each other, so I kind of have to make a choice. Um, I'll do this one right here. That actually looks really, really great. And so you kind of have to play around with one, different fonts, two, different words, and then three, different placements of things. Uh, because, you know, there are a couple of, of little, maybe what could be considered slightly awkward places where it just, it just barely touches it by hair, or it might create awkward little gaps in your text. 
And so what I like um, is being able to position it to where there are no awkward gaps. I mean, when I set this one up, for example, I spent at least two to three minutes playing around with the positioning of the script text to make sure that it wasn't uh, creating any awkward gaps and that it was the cleanest. So out of these three, I definitely think that these two are the cleanest. This one was just another practice rep. So just to show you an example of other things that you can do, this is just two shapes. Actually, this is two fonts, but I've made circles out of it. Um, you can use this effect with shapes too. So say for example, I want, yeah, so the top one is the one that I'm gonna be exporting. So the bottom one right here, I'm going to turn the layer visibility off on that as well as the background. And then I can click my artboard, download, re-export that, import that back into the program, same deal, top left corner, boop, size it up. Now I can turn those other layers back on and I can make sure that this one is behind here. And then I can click on my illustration, hit E, and then I can choose which portion of this I want to be done to make these look like they're kind of interwoven. So say I don't like that one, just undo. And then I say, I wanna do this one instead. Boop, done. And you could not do that before, so that's super awesome. Our buddy Juna over at Detour Shirts also made a video having some fun with the eraser tool. And you can see in this video, he used one AI to generate a, I think it was like a watercolor version of a dog wearing sunglasses and it had something in the reflection of the sunglasses, but he wants it to change the reflection in the sunglasses to something else. Using the eraser tool, he was able to cut away the inside of the sunglasses and then put his own background behind it so that he changed what the sunglasses looked like. So I'm gonna do my own version of that here. I'm gonna go over to AI and I've honestly been using Turbo lately. It's technically our rebranded V1. It's way faster. The generation styles are way better. The accuracy is way better. It just is great. And it only costs one credit. So what I'm gonna do is a dog wearing sunglasses with a city in the reflection of the glasses. Let's see what we can do with that. I'm gonna click our watercolor and generate. Awesome, so right off the bat, Turbo is fire, and I won't even debate anybody on that. Turbo is great. So I could take this and I could use it how it is. I might see what the background remover does. Did a pretty good job there. Actually, it did a wildly good job. That's incredible. Sometimes I get surprised. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to click E, and in this instance, you do have to be accurate with the way that the two layers interact with each other. It wouldn't make sense to put a layer of this dog behind the layer because you're erasing one layer, but then it would just show the one behind it. It, it wouldn't work in this instance, unfortunately. So I'm going to size up my eraser. I just find I can be more accurate when the circle is a little bit bigger and I'm going around edges and I'm trying to be careful. Maybe a little smaller so I can hit that curve. Let's go right there and then just do this as steady as I can. And this can be as accurate or not accurate as you want it to be. I referenced that in the other video. It's all about how much time you wanna spend on this. So I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit. Doesn't look too bad at all. Yep, so that's the left lens and we're gonna go over and do the same to the right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my image generation again using Turbo, and I'm just gonna do a digital art of a galaxy with super colorful planets. And let's see what that gives us. That looks great. I'm going to do one more generation because I kind of want the planets to be smaller and not have one big central one, so I might change the prompt up a little bit. It helps to be kind of more specific sometimes. With a bunch of small, super colorful planets. Let's see how that goes. All right, so I'm gonna use this portion right here, size this up. I might actually do this right here. One thing we can do is we can crop this to the size that we need, probably about here. But the issue is if we put this to the back, we've still got some stuff popping out behind there. So 
Now that we have an eraser tool, we can just hit the eraser tool, get rid of those portions, done. If you are kind of scared that you're not going to be accurate, another thing that you can do is you can click on the thing that you're erasing and you can turn the opacity down on it and then erase it. And you'll be able to see behind here, okay, so this place actually gets pretty close to the sunglasses. So if you're not accurate, you would actually screw up and, and, and mess up part of your actual uh, galaxy portion that you're trying to keep. But since I've, I've turned the opacity down, I can see this is where I need to be erasing. And then the rest of it doesn't really all matter all that much. I could just be safe and just take a little bit more portions off of that. Something like that. Exit the eraser mode and then turn my opacity back up. And already that looks awesome, but one thing I'm gonna fix is it looks like I may have missed a little section here and I'm gonna erase that away, exit the eraser mode. And it looks like actually the generation might have missed a little bit of the sunglasses when I removed the background. So what I would do in this instance is I would just find some sort of shape to put behind to fill in that gap so just so that it's not transparent and then make it a relative color like on the sunglasses and then I can put it to the back and that'll kind of mask that a little bit like when I zoom out you can't really tell so just like before this is going to be as nice as the amount of time you want to spend on it if I had more time what I would have actually done there to fill that in is take the same generation not remove the background from the dog put that behind the background removed version and then erase away the background around the dog and then it would have left uh, that portion of the sunglasses in. But on to my next little tip here, I'm going to take my dog illustration and I'm going to duplicate this and then this is gonna sound weird, but I'm going to erase away all the parts that are not where the sunglasses are. Now what I can do is I can add a shadow to this and this will make sense in a second. I'm gonna adjust my shadow here, maybe turn down the offset like that and maybe erase a little bit more there just so I don't have any issues. Awesome. Now what I can do is I can take my main dog illustration, put that on top and now I have this little bit of shadow inside the rim of the sunglasses that makes it just, just a hair more realistic. Um, so when you zoom out, this is version one, this is version two, may not matter all that much to you, but something to keep in mind that you can do now that you could not do before, uh, now that we have the eraser tool. That's all for today's video. Comment down below if you love the eraser tool. We love the eraser tool. This one feature just opens up a crazy amount of opportunity, which is awesome. So drop a comment down below if you love the eraser tool. Check out that other video that I did on the eraser tool as well. Just kind of does more basic function of it. If you're not quite understanding, go check out that video and go watch Juna's video. Juna is an awesome educator who also loves Kittle like we love Kittle and he always has some awesome tips. If you're not subscribed already to the channel, you're missing out. You should hit that subscribe button right now. Make sure to like this video. And if you have never heard of Kittle and you've stumbled upon this video and you're like, I don't even know what the heck Kittle is, we have a free trial for you. Head over to Kittle.com and sign up for that free trial today. Also, if you're already on a free plan and you want to upgrade to a pro or expert plan to unlock some of those more premium features, we have a promo code for you in the description of this video. Again, we so appreciate you watching this video, commenting, liking, subscribing, all of that. We'll see you in the next one.